Well, hello everyone. We've got a marvellous route here today. This one is incredibly easy, but it goes a long way. We're going to go from Bisley in uh, Surrey to Hampton Court on the outskirts of London. And we're hardly going to see any traffic on the way. Most of the traffic will actually be in the village of Naphill as we get onto the uh, Basingstoke Canal. So this is the over overview of the route and uh, you can see we're starting at Bisley, ending in Hampton Court and we're just using three rivers on the way. So uh, when you get to, to Hampton Court of course you've got Bushy Park, we've got Ham House, there's Kew Gardens just a little bit further and Richmond Park. So let's follow along the three rivers we're using, Basingstoke Canal, the Way Navigation into Weybridge and then onto the Thames uh, and then there's only one bit where we have to leave the path and that's back there, that's at the lock. So Thames Lock really is, is the only bit where you're going to leave the road and, and that final bit where you cross across to Hampton Court. Once you get to, to Bushy Park there are so many places that you can walk about and paths to explore, there's lakes, all sorts of things. So a very simple route and it's not hard but it is quite long. So we're looking at about 40 miles there and back. So here we go, basically okay, now we're now on the River Way and then we cut through, we're now on the Thames, we come through Sunbury and at the outskirts and heading towards Kingston around Bushy Park and then just retrace our steps all the way back, back onto the River Way and then back on to the Basingstoke Canal. Well, you can see the Basingstoke Canal is a fairly substantial part of the route and then back home. So really quite simple. You can see there, 38 miles. Don't ignore the 3,000 feet of climb. It's about 200 overall. So here we are leaving Knapp Hill Village. We're going through the high street, waiting for a lorry to get out the way. Uh, this is the most busy bit. If you don't like the traffic here, you can always push your bikes or go along the pavement. But we're now crossing over at the traffic lights, heading down Victoria Road, up towards the old barracks, which used to be a barracks when I was a kid, uh, crossing over. Now we're on parallel to Barrack Path and Winston Churchill School there. Now just the final bit, we cross over the road here. This is all cycle path. And now we just hit the Basin Stoke Canal. And this is a route that if you followed others of our routes, you'll be very familiar with this first part. So we go through the outskirts of St John's and past all the locks. They were doing some work on the locks which was nice and they also strimmed it so there's a difference between when we came home and when we went out. So here we are on the outskirts of Woking. We're in Horsell at the moment. Uh, there's the, the pub. That's a nice pub to stop at. Now we went under that bridge but you can actually go around the outside of it and uh, I think we do that on the way home. So here we are just hitting into the air outskirts of Woking now past the little uh, cafe boat that's been sitting there for a while there we go and then we've got our spiral bridge that's really difficult on a tandem but is not too bad on ordinary bikes round and now we head out to the back of Woking through Shearwater, Maybury that sort of area. This is really quiet actually it's surprising how much the busyness of Woking vanishes when you get to this side of Woking town. So here we are and now we're in peaceful parts and we're heading out along that road towards West by Fleet. So this bit's fairly easy and we go past Bishop David Brown School really, well the grounds of it. A lot of new housing development that's taking place on the right up here. And Woodham Road on the left with all its big houses. And here we go, once you reach the canal boats you know that you're a good proportion of the way along and you're in the quiet place. Go underneath the road here, in the old days you used to have to go over it because there was always problems with the bridge. And now we work our way along towards Newhall. There we go, past the lock. And then just up here we've got this little chicane at the end of these houseboats that we have to try and negotiate 
to get our car through, our bike through. So we go through this bit, and then this is really, oh, it's the worst bit of the whole journey, really, trying to drag the back of your bike around when you've got heavy panniers. So we're now going to work our way through. We're almost at the bridge at West Byfleet. This last little bit, road was the path was a bit narrow here because the overgrowth, the undergrowth was leaning out over. But now we just head up over the little bridge and we're going to turn left and head up now on the river way. So, so now we're on to Cox's Lock and that will be coming up in a little while. We're going through uh, the outskirts of West Byfleet and New Hoare and then heading out up to cross the road at this little point here. And then we're heading up to Cox's Lock, which is on the edge of a village called, or town called Adelston. Which is just going to be up here a little bit. And then when you get from Adelston, that's the point where it starts to change again. So as you actually head up this bit, uh, the, the path is a bit full of roots and various other things, so it can get a bit slippery. But now we're getting onto this part here. It's probably the worst bit of the journey, and it's as you head into the poshest part of the journey itself, on the edge of uh, Chertsey and Weybridge, all the posh houses. So uh, the more money the people in the locality seem to have, then the worse they look after their towpath. So we have to cross the road here. This is Chertsey Bridge, and uh, we stopped a little look around here and then we get back on our bike and carry on. So now heading out, uh, it's a really nice bit of ride this bit as we look over and dream about the gardens and the, the houses that you see on the edge of St George's Hill there, uh, which are all pop star houses. So we're crossing over. Now we're heading up to the lock, Thames Lock which is the boundary between the Thames and the River Way. It's a really tight push, and in fact, if you've got a long bike, you'll bottom out here. We have to then go around the outside of the park, and then just at the end, we turn right. And this is where we have to come into the town a little bit. There is a cycle path, but you can't get your bike through it very easily. It's got a very tight chicane. So we just head around and then rejoin the lock here. So we're back on the Thames, on the, uh, the river. Been on the Thames for a while, and we're now heading up through. We go past various different Molesy rowing clubs and other things. But this journey, it's quite broad here, and in places there's two parallel paths running along, but the surface is really nice. So it's a, it can get a little bit grumbly with all the tree roots. But other than that, so here we are, Walton on Thames. And we stopped here for a drink and a cup of tea. Uh, use the loose. And it's a great place to stop. You can have a picnic, you can stop at this point and don't have to go any further. But now we're heading off over the bridge. Nice place to stop and take photographs of the area actually, that little bridge. And now you can see it is quite a different type of surface when you're on the Thames path. It's usually much broader but you will get a lot of people walking their dogs so you do need to be careful. So keep that bell pinging all the time. It's, it's no great sacrifice from your point but it can make all the difference. Although we have ex actually experienced uh, when we went on a ride up to Wisley yesterday that we found that probably about 50 to 60 percent of the people we meet on the path actually have headphones in and their self uh, noise cancelling and they can't hear a thing so you're actually shouting really loud or calling to them really loudly and they still can't hear and then they jump as you very slowly crawl past them so here we are at the lock this is a big lock, you have to walk your way through here, um, but this is one of those tidal locks that controls the way in which the river runs. And 
off we go again past one of the ferries there's several ferries that cross here uh, most of them for pedestrians and they're really just small boats so the surface here broad wide enough to get a vehicle down actually but it's pedestrian and cycles only and it's a little bit sheltered it depends on on what the time of day you're heading into you know this is getting towards lunchtime around midday and you'll see that the sun is on our right so occasionally we're in the, the full shade uh, which is not too bad actually and you can see the towers of London and the outskirts beginning to rise up around you through the park this is quite a broad surface but it's got a bit of a nasty edge actually if you go off the edge and here we are by another one of the ferries that I've never seen running and then off we go not much to say around here surfaces pretty good it is a bit grumbly I wouldn't recommend it on a road bike but gravel bikes will have no trouble MTBs tourers anything above about 32 mil tires will be fine more traffic just have to hit the road at this little point here and now we're going to go across the the bridge at Hampton Court so here we go a view of the river that we've got both sides absolutely beautiful part of London seem to escape all the, the ravages of the middle of the last century and there's Hampton Court you can just about see in the distance the chimneys rising up so we cross the river and then you then have to just cross the road one little bit there's a proper cycle path and we were looking in Hampton Court we're getting ready for the Hampton Court show which is coming up the horticultural show run by the RHS and so you can see this fa fabulous display of wildflowers or nectar border really and then we just follow the 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 wall around the outside so keep following the wall and then you get to this crossing you cross over and you're immediately in Bushy Park now Bushy Park is a huge grassed area and it's got this one central road that runs through it with a bit of a fountain in the middle and we just headed round this followed the road you can see it's not really open to cars and vehicles it's only the uh, vehicles for the maintenance staff that are able to use it there are car parks here so you may just want to be picked up at the other end by somebody and we're just going to work our way to the back edge over here which is where you'd go out if you wanted to go to Richmond or to Kew or to any of those other places via the gardens otherwise just stay on the river and we're now going to follow around the outskirts this is a cycle track it's really nice you can see deer all sorts of creatures around here lots of dragonflies it was a real dragonfly day really hot and we work our way down and we followed along the edges of these lakes and we stopped and watched the deer and then sat by the river by, or by the lake or the little ponds really and had our lunch so here we are on our way back now so we're heading home carrying on around the edge of the lakes uh, through the car park that you can see and rather than taking the main road out we cut through a little path and carried on back through the centre of Bushy Park around the chicanes around the other side of this huge roundabout with the fountain back out the gate that we came in across the road and at this point there's a cycle path all the way along the inside here pretty safe actually because the traffic barely moves 
and and instead of crossing here which is where we should have crossed we actually went over the bridge because we wanted to see from the middle of the bridge and then we uh, crossed at the other end so here we go back now on the Thames path not much to see there's a set of toilets back there which is quite useful and now you can see it's later in the day schools have broken up and a huge number of people these days from London seem to finish work at three o'clock in the afternoon and go out for a walk so you'll find that there's a lot of people out walking on the way home so let's just sit and watch the, ju the journey as we go along and uh, it doesn't need really much commentating I hope you've enjoyed our rides uh, we really would like you to like these videos so so there's a little thumb up down below if you click on that it helps tremendously uh, we would also love you to subscribe uh, because we can do loads and loads of these journeys the point of them is so that you see where it is uh, that you're going to going to be cycling through you get to know the, the the road surface the obstacles particularly when we find somewhere that is impassable and that happens quite a lot when you plan on commute and other things so uh, that's the purpose of why we're doing this and uh, we're not sponsored we don't earn any money from these videos we don't have anywhere near you need a thousand subscribers we haven't I think we had about 45 uh, but we'd love you to subscribe because that that really helps and gets a little bit more um, coverage for our videos and it also enables you to really to make informed choices so if you know what the road surface is going to be like if you know the obstacles you're going to meet if you know the type of length of riding and the amount of climbs that you've got you can then choose your bike you can plan well you can also time it which is useful you're going to average well if you're on a tandem you're going to average about eight to nine miles per hour so if it's 40 miles you're really going to be out for just over four hours doing this journey about four hours of cycling it doesn't always work out like that because parts of it are quite fast but you've got to really allow for the people that you're going to meet and accommodate on the way. So there we are, that's the bit where we have to hit the road and now around back around the park and back onto Thames Lock so it's a nightmare getting over the top of this it's really steep you then have to push your bike and now we're heading back towards the riverway and into the back end of Weybridge and Chertsey There's Chertsey Bridge arriving. This bit traffic got particularly bad in the evening, so really be careful here. And so we run parallel on this path. Occasionally there'll be people walking on it, and I think it is not really a formally a cycle path, but it's not very long. We're looking about 100 meters. Now back, and here we are on the river way properly. And following this is the grumbly bit because we're in the outskirts of Chertsey and Weybridge and then gradually the surface will improve as we get towards Adelston but still a lot of routes across so it can be quite bouncy and when we were out the other day we hit the river Way and parts of this were really sandy it had dried out and that can also be dangerous because the the wheels tend to not steer properly and you can start to slide if you're not careful but here we go, back half of the river way. And you'll see that you don't get a huge amount of dog walking taking place on the way. It's because most of the accommodation is on the other side. But here we go, 
we're crossing over we get onto the Basingstoke Canal and it's at this point that we start to meet more and more people particularly if you're after half past three four o'clock you're going to meet a lot more people walking uh, seem to be a lot of couples as well but people staring at phones people with their headphones on it's really difficult to get past through that nasty chicane that they've got so you do have to make sure you ring the bell to make sure that everybody who's coming uh, everybody's on the, the water knows that you're there so now heading back outskirts of Woking here we are at the lock start getting joined by kids from BDB at this point and the sun is in your eyes because we're heading almost exactly southwest. In the summer you can't beat it as a route to get around the, the locality. It's by far nicer than sitting there in a traffic jam absolutely locked up. Um, you know, they're, they're always gridlocked the roads around Woking, uh, particularly because they're always building in Woking and half the roads are closed. So, I'd like to thank you for joining us anyway. Do again, as I said before, please remember to like and subscribe if you sat through to this point. You've obviously got something that's keeping you going, but it's a great route. Uh, we enjoy it. This will be our primary route now into London, but as we get here, back towards Woking you can see that we haven't met a great deal of traffic and very few vehicles here we are outskirts of Woking under the bridge and soon we'll be with the curly bridge passing up and over here we go around it does get tight if you've got a burly trailer you'll find that hard yes please like and subscribe and we really like to love you to join us on the next few rides that we've got we've got uh, more around Yorkshire Dales that we can outline and we've updated and revised our journey of the Swale Trail traveling in the opposite direction outskirts of Horsell back into St John's And then this time, when we get into St John's, we're not going to carry on round towards Brookwood and Knapp Hill, but instead we're going to re retrace our steps back home through the centre of Knapp Hill Village, which is rush hour. It's, it's not bad at all, but you can see here, now we're heading back. We're going to cross over the bypass down the back of Winston Churchill School along parallel with Barrett Path. And back into the village of Knapp Hill. Through the centre of the village, that's probably one of the most difficult junctions that you'll encounter all the way along, but you could just walk your bath, walk your you could just walk your bike over the cycle route. So here's a summary of the route that we've done, starting down the bottom there in Knapp Hill, working our way through up the river, the Basingstoke Canal, then the Riverway, and then onto the Thames. Here's a summary of our route. We've got a commute, and you'll see on the right-hand side there is a GPX file that you can download if you've got SatNav. To be honest, I don't think you need it, really. It's pretty obvious all the way. Simplest navigation for a 20 mile ride and then 20 miles back again. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the Yorkshire Dales very soon. Bye.